Good morning. morning. Welcome to worship this morning. Uh, We have a few announcements for you going into this week that's coming up. Uh, Youth group will not happen this week. Kayla and I will be away, uh, but we'll start back up again the week after, so feel free to come out to that if you're a youth. Um, Teresa's Sunday school class is starting today, correct? Next week. Next week. So be ready next week. Uh, It'll be next week, and you want to be a part of that. If, If you're a young adult, feel free to be a part of that. Youth Sunday School, um, Susie Scott is going to be teaching Youth Sunday School September 25th. So if you're a youth, uh, we want people uh, that, are, that are a part of our youth to come to Sunday School uh, all the time. But next week will be Susie Scott, so feel free to come out and be a part of that. Next week also, we will be having our church uh, picnic celebration for our sixth year. Come casual. Uh, we're going to have church, we're going to have Sunday school, then we're going to go to the picnic. Pastor Gary and I are going to be casual, so you should be casual so we don't feel bad. And that's how that works. And then before that, we're actually going to have a vote next week as well. So come out if you want to be a part of the vote in order to vote in our new board members that are going to be a part of the board for 2023 as well. Um, and so I think that's what we got for announcements this morning. Uh, other than that, uh, let's go to the Lord in prayer. Lord, we thank you this morning for this time to come into your house to worship and to praise you, God. Lord, we thank you for your grace and your love and your mercy. We thank you, Lord, that you came and gave your life as a sacrifice, Jesus, that we are forgiven of our sins, Lord, that we are free of our sin and we can have life in you and life to the fullest today, Jesus. Lord, we are truly alive today because of who you are. Lord, apart from you, we have no life, and we just thank you for the life that you've given us. Lord, we pray this this morning, Lord, for the leaders here at Forever Grace Church, that you would continue to work through the leaders and in the leaders, Lord, to bring about your will here, Lord, for your glory in all things, we pray. And Lord, we pray that you would just guide the direction of Forever Grace moving forward for your glory and your honor as well, uh, we pray this morning, God. Lord, we pray for those that aren't feeling well this morning, that you would continue to be with them and help for them to recover, to feel better, to bounce back, Lord, that you'd bring healing where, where healing is needed. Lord, that you'd bring emotional strength where emotional strength is needed, God. That you would help for us to grow deeper with you spiritually, Lord, because we all need that as well, we pray, God. And that you would just help us through anything that we may be going through today, we pray. Lord, we love you and we thank you and we pray this through Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, Vicki's going to come up now and give you a summary of the focus groups. Good morning. I'm going to just share a little bit of information um, that came from the focus groups. For those of you who attended, if you remember, a snowy February and March. So it seems like a long time ago, but, um, and hopefully it'll be a long time before it's snowy again. But we wanted to bring some of this information to you. The first thing that I would tell you is that we really wanted to hear from the people attending this church. So for those of you that that took part in these focus groups, that was really important to us. For those of you that are new attending, we want to share the information that came from the focus groups. This is not a group of five or six people making the decisions without asking what you're looking for. Um, Now, while you can't do everything everybody suggested, because we did have a lot of suggestions, great suggestions, but I've tried to compile this into some categories. So Austin has a PowerPoint, I think, with some of the information. One of the questions that we asked in the focus group was, why do people come to Forever Grace? Kind of wanted to know, you know, what makes people drive by other churches and come to this church? And overwhelmingly, the answers were the people. It's each other, the relationships that we have with each other when we come to church the friendships, the small groups, that it's Bible-based, small, intimate church, feeling wanted, welcome, important, and needed, independent church, music, and the pastors. So the pastors did make the top (laughs) part of the group. (laughs) I'm kind of partial, but they did make the top list. So, so that's good. And just kind of backtracking a little bit, we had 81% participation from those we invited. So we felt that you were telling us this was important to you as well, to share your thoughts. The next piece, and, and it's a little small, sorry about that, 
we kind of, through this process, we had somebody kind of point out to us in one of our focus groups, and it's just great, um, kind of a branding for Forever Grace. And it starts with being Bible-based, and that's our top circle. It works into love and grace, and then disciple makers and congregation. So it's just kind of, you know, how one piece works with the next piece and how it all flows together. I thought that was important to share with you. The next slide that I'm going to share are kind of the top seven ideas that came as I put the information together from all the focus groups. And again, for those that didn't attend, these were small groups of families. Um, and we met with six, seven different groups, um, asking the same questions and then putting the information together. And what we've done with this is I've taken this back to the board, and we've spent several meetings praying over this, looking at this. This all factors into what do we do here at Forever Grace next? How do we build our future? What are the important things that we want to make sure we have the ability to do based off of what you're sharing with us? So the top seven that made this list, community activities. We heard repeatedly that our congregation would like to have, a, now I'm not going to be able to say the word, this word kills me. So thank you, Linda said it, benevolent. Um, I've practiced this word this morning and it's still hard for me. This word is just a, a problem for my brain. But we heard that you wanted to have a fund set aside so that we could help those that are in need. And we have been doing a lot of that through Forever Grace. But we also heard not just a fund, but we want to be able to assist physically with those needs. And some of our youth group told us, we want to be a part of this. We want to be a part of going in and helping. If, the, if there's some situation in, in the community, we want to be able to go in and offer our services and help. It's not just cash. It's actually doing. They even suggested an emergency response team. Who, could, who do we know that has expertise in different areas that we could put together to go in and do this? So the building was another key opportunity that we heard. And what we heard from the group is we need meeting space. It's tough to even spend time socializing because we're kind of tight on space. We need Sunday school rooms. We need a larger building. We heard a little bit about expanding, maybe some wings out to the side. Um, so we heard a little bit of that. Sanctuary and accessibility was one of our, our top keys. Um, being able to get everybody into the sanctuary that wants to come to service. Um, space for fellowship, area for carry-in, funeral dinners. We heard a couple of times a pavilion too, in behind the building, so that we could do some things outside. So hopefully next Sunday will be nice weather and we can be outside, because we heard that that was something that people wanted to be able to be outside and be together. Youth um, was one of our top seven. Um, this was pretty critical to the groups that were sharing with us. After school program, um, assist the community with youth needs, We've heard that in several different dimensions. Um, that could take um, several different avenues. We also heard funding for school sports. Maybe there's a child that, that can't fund their school sport, and we could assist with that as a church and maybe um, you know, be able to offer um, that type of thing to them. Camp and retreats for youth. Young families was next. That's important to Forever Grace. These young families, young moms group, the nursery, inviting other young couples. Discipleship, we heard in one group, you know, maybe training couples on how to have a Bible study. Maybe one of our couples here in this church inviting an unchurched couple to do a Bible study with them in their home on a regular basis. Um, discipleship classes, mentors, trained lay counselors, and human trafficking has been something that's been really important to Forever Grace Church for a number of years and continues to be important to us. And so that certainly made our top seven list. There are some ideas that we have put in place, and I think that's important to know, that when you share an idea and we could put that into place immediately, we wanted to do that. So 
<clears throat> Somebody suggested study Bibles as graduation gifts, and that was one of the gifts this year for our graduating seniors, using kids more during worship. Now, I have heard, though, that we really like the worship service where um, Pastor Casey had kids doing a lot of the service, that that went over really well, and we'd love to have that again. That was a great service. Um, but using kids during the service, and Pastor Casey has been doing that. Board of Directors names available. It's in your bulletin now, and it scrolls in the announcements ahead of time. Financials available. Those are available in the back um, every month and are provided. Where to take ideas. We had somebody ask us this. If we have an idea, where do we take it? And we've already had a couple people ask to attend individually a board meeting to share their idea. Um, and so we made that a possible um, for those that came to us. A young kid's Sunday school class. That's happening um, and working out very well. So we did try to put ideas. It's not just let's collect these ideas and hang on to them and eventually, you know, we'll get over it. Um, we put these ideas into place right away, the ones that we could enact quickly. Um, so more than anything, we want you to know that we are listening. We did listen. We did take these ideas. We have been working um, with an architect and talking about, you know, different things, um, working with um, an industrial engineer, civil engineer, sorry, civil engineer, um, you know, to talk about some of these ideas. So it, they were important to us, and we are doing something with them, and we will continue to share kind of what the thoughts are. But we spend a lot of time praying about these things that you shared with us, and more than anything, we want to be able to accomplish Forever Grace future with your ideas. Um, so I just wanted to, we wanted to come to you and share that information. Any thoughts, concerns, anything that, anything from the board that I left out? Okay. I am going to try to put Pastor Gary's notes back together up here that I've messed up and sit down. youth. I have an awfully loud voice, though. <laughs> Mack truck kind of voice. Um, if you were in high school last year, come next week, too. At some point, I'm going to do a little hoo-hoo about interpreting the word, interpreting God's mind and his heart, which is his word. So that's what we're going to talk about next Sunday. So if you were in high school last year, come anyway. That's it. Psalm 57, verses 7 through 11. My heart is confident in you, O God. My heart is confident. No wonder I can sing your praises. Wake up, my heart. Wake up, O lyre and harp. I will wake the dawn with my song. I will thank you, Lord, among all the people. I will sing your praises among the nations, for your unfailing love is as high as the heavens. Your faithfulness reaches to the clouds. Be exalted, O God, above the highest heavens. May your glory shine over all the earth. Thank you. And if you'll rise, we'll sing this morning. We're beginning with Crown Him with Many Crowns.
to the Lord. We'll do that twice. Tim is going to bring a prayer with us. Let's go to the Lord. Dear Lord, we praise and we bless your holy name, Lord. Lord, we know that so many times, Lord, we turn our backs on you. Lord, let us hold fast to your hand, never let him go, Lord. Going to you for everything. I mean everything in our lives, Lord, even the minute details, Lord, we need to say to you. Lord, never let us forget what mercies you have bestowed upon mankind since the beginning of time that you put man on the earth. And so many times, Lord, we've read in the Bible where we have turned our backs on you continually, Lord. But you woo us back, Lord, those who will and those, Lord, they come back and you forgive them, Lord. So help us to do this at all times, Lord, knowing that you are a gracious God, Lord. I ask, Lord, that we hear your word this morning, Lord, that this comes across and we just don't hear it, Lord, but we absorb it, that it becomes part of our being, that we show that to the rest of the world, Lord, that we become more Christ-like in all that we do and not be absorbed by the world, Lord but to make a difference. And we ask it all in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Thank you, Tim. Thank you, team. Appreciate it. When you stand in the back, sometimes you get pictures. 
Today it was double. I got one on each side. It's the little blessings of life, right? Let me, let me just, um, before I get to this message here, let me just talk to you a little bit. We, it's important that next uh, Sunday you, you remember that you can invite anybody to the picnic that you want. You can invite them in here, but some people will want to come to the picnic before they'll want to come into this building. Um, it's just being really honest with you. So if you've got a friend that's been saying, I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know, it's a great thing to bring them out to the picnic and let them have uh, some, share some time there. So bring someone with you, if you will. Uh, you, you're welcome to bring them in here, too. So obviously we have room, so you can, you can uh, bring them in here. So we'd love for you to do that. And Casey said he is going to be casual, so uh, I guess we'll all be casual, won't we? No, that's, that's the way to go. I would really, uh, I, w- I want to open with prayer, but I really struggled this week trying to find out what I wanted to talk to you about. I usually don't struggle very much. Uh, and it wasn't because I didn't have anything to say, because I don't think you've ever found me one time when I don't have something to say. <laughs> I think that's a good Amen. I made a list. You know, I, I'm a, we were at the bottom of that list, by the way, the pastors were. But I was standing back there by Janet Beckman, and rightfully so, she said, that's where they should be because they shouldn't be put on a pedestal. They shouldn't be the, the center of attention, right? Pastors. Thank you, Janet. Put me in my place. <laughs> but I did struggle this week because I had... It's not because I didn't have anything. It's because I couldn't decide what was best. And I kept saying, God, come on. Come on. Sunday's on the way. <laughs> and I changed it two or three times during the week. I even sent the mess, the, uh, the bulletin. By the way, Noelle always, uh, she always puts this bulletin together after Casey and I gave her the information. And I sent it to her and I said, don't put the scripture or the sermon on there. I'll fill it in later. So you see, I struggled to get this to this, but um, so it's going to be, I I just think, can we talk for just a second before I start? I went back and looked, by the way, you can go on forevergracechurch.org. That's our website. You'll see all the sermons for the last couple years that are on there. So if you want to go back and I did that this week, I went back and I, I did it for the purpose of looking up Pastor Jack's last sermons with us. And they're on there, by the way. Uh, his last one was the 23rd Psalm, April 3rd. And the one before that was the presence of God. And I, I, I listened to little bits and pieces of it. Of course, I've listened to Pastor Jack for years. But I, I couldn't help but think about his style. It's so good. His style is so good. I wish it could be just like him, but... God doesn't want me to be just like him. And then I, then I pulled up a couple of Casey's uh, earlier messages. And by the way, if you haven't been here the last three weeks to listen to Pastor Casey, you, you need to go back and, and to listen to him because uh, he, he, he's on a, been on a roll here. So, But his style, Casey's style, obviously is a lot different than my style. He doesn't use a note. I don't know how that works, but he doesn't use a note. But Pastor Jack's style is different than my style and his style. It's it's just, and yet, all the messages I went back and looked at, the same theme was in every one of them. Jesus is Lord. Jesus is King. Follow Jesus. Every message ends up with Jesus being the King of Kings and Lord of Lords. I love it. I love that you can go so many different places in the Bible and yet find Jesus in the midst of every one of them. Pray with me for a moment, would you? Father, this pastor is a sinner saved by grace. He comes before these people 
broken but yet alive in you. Disciplined by you but loved by you. Messages that come to him, Father, I know are from you. Today, Lord, you know I struggled. But I felt your presence when I walked into the building. I knew it was going to be okay, Father. Because you were here. Your Holy Spirit was here. Ready to fill not only me, but this family of God up. Please be with me, Father, and this, with the hearts and the minds of these people today as we talk these next few moments. In the name of Jesus, the precious Son, amen. amen. Back in the 1980s, the Minnesota Twins had this description of, uh, of the game of baseball in their program, describing baseball. It said, you have two sides, one out, one in. Each man that's on the side that's in goes out. And when he's out, he comes in. And then the next man goes in until he's out. And when three men are out, the side that go, that's out comes in. And the side that's been in goes out and tries to get those coming in out. And sometimes you get, the, get men still in and not out. And when both sides have been in and out nine times, including the not outs, that's the end of the game. You got that right? Adrian, you understood all that. You're a baseball man. You understood every bit of that. Baseball can be a confusing game. I saw something printed in a Little League program, and I pulled that up. I, I went back through my files this week because I was looking for things that, um, that I'd written down. I write things down, and I put them in a file, and then I forget I've got them, and then, then I remember, I, I should go look at this file. And I was reading this, and this, I found this about Little League. It says, there are always new players who do not know or understand the rules, and the game becomes confusing and frustrating for them. If you don't hit the ball, you're out, unless you get four bad pitches before you get three good ones. And you need to run really fast if you hit the ball, unless you hit it on the wrong side of the white line, or unless they catch it but they have to catch it before it hits the ground. And you can run past first base and home plate, but you can't run past second and third base. Or second, yeah, second and third base. And if you've got the ball, you need to step on the base to get someone out unless you have to tag them. That's clear as mud, right? I tell this story, I've told this story before about Austin. I was a baseball, I was a baseball coach and baseball umpire. I was a baseball umpire for 17 years. High school baseball. Loved every minute of it, except when it was raining and snowing. <laughs> Austin decided he probably, he'd just get his baseball umpire's license when he got to, at that age, about 21. And so he'd been playing baseball all of his life. He'd been around me. He'd heard me talk about baseball. So he went to get his baseball license. He said, you need to study. You've got to study for this test. It's not an easy test. And he's like, Dad, it's baseball. Okay. He flunked it. <laughs> because there are so many rules in baseball, it's, it's just impossible to know them all. That's why umpires are so bad today. No, no I'm just kidding. <laughs> I, did, I didn't say that out loud. But I wrote this down. If children only see baseball as a bunch of rules that everyone knows but, but them, it's easy for them to get discouraged and just quit. And when they get confused and do the wrong thing, everyone seems to get mad and upset. It's easier just not to play. But with patience and teaching, children can learn to love the game of baseball. Now, why am I talking about baseball? I got started on rules. Start talking about rules. You see, as Christians, we have rules God expects us to follow. And where do we find those rules? But here, of course. We all know this. We find them here. These guidelines that he gives us. 
The Bible tells us everything we need to know about what God wants us to do, what's right and what's wrong. We have no other rule book that we need to go by but this one. I know there are creeds out there and there's catechisms and there's books on doctrine. But it's the book and the book alone. I remember when we first got started here six years ago right now, as a matter of fact, David, it was, what, the 16th, I think, of September. We got started here six years ago and we were talking about someone questioned us on what's your doctrine for your church. And I'm a new pastor, and I'm like, um, um, and Dave Beckman was sitting there, and he goes, he held up his Bible, and he said this. Well, I knew that answer, but I was trying to think, I was trying to be really smart, give him a really smart answer when it was just real simple. It's the Bible. And we've continued that all six years. We try not to let other things enter into it. See, I'm getting to these Pharisees who thought their rules were better than God's rules because they took what God had, but they didn't think they were quite enough. So these Pharisee guys and gals, was there gals in that? No, probably guys, all guys. Sorry, gals. They decided we, we could add to this a little bit. We'll make it a lot better, won't we? So let me talk to you today just a little bit about these Pharisees. Of course, they didn't have the advantage of the New Testament. They had the Old Testament to go by. And since they didn't have enough rules, they wanted to add some things to theirs and make it their book. Um, they thought everything should be reverent and you should all be, you know you should all be sitting with your hands in your lap, folded now, and be very still and quiet and not shout out and not raise your hands if the Pharisees, yeah, you're doing a good job, Bill. <laughs> Y'all, some of you that are my age and older, which there's only just a few of you, you remember Irma Bombeck? Oh, some of you younger than me even said yes. Irma Bombeck was this uh, funny, humorous lady writer, and I found something she had written. It's, uh, she was talking about a little boy at church with his mother. He was a good little boy, quiet and well-behaved. He didn't cause any problems, but every once in a while he would stand up in the pew, and he would turn around and look behind him and smile at the people behind him. His smile was infectious, and soon everybody behind him was starting to smile back at him too. It was all going fine until the mother realized what the little boy was doing, and when she did, she grabbed him by his ear, twisted it a bit, and told him to sit down and remember that he was in church. Then he started sniffling and crying, and she, she turned to him, mother turned to him and said, that's better. It made me think of the Pharisees, you know? Follow the rules. Follow the rules. Even though you're having a good time, you shouldn't be. And that's not the way it is here. Amen. Let me read to you about these Pharisee guys here just a little bit from Mark 2. And then I'm going to get into some more on the rules that we live by once again Jesus went out beside the lake a large crowd came to him and he began to teach them as he walked along he saw Levi son of Alphaeus sitting at the ta tax collector's booth this is Matthew of course Levi Matthew he said follow me Jesus told him and Levi got up and followed him and while Jesus was having dinner at Levi's house many tax collectors and sinners were eating with him and his disciples, for there were many who followed him. And when the teachers of the law who were, were Pharisees saw him eating with the sinners and tax collectors, they asked his disciples, why does he eat with tax collectors and sinners? 
And on hearing this, Jesus said to them, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. Now John's disciples and the Pharisees were fasting. Some people came and asked Jesus, how is it that John's disciples and the disciples of the Pharisees are fasting, but yours are not? And Jesus answered, how can the guests of the bridegroom fast while he is with them? They cannot, so long as they have him with them. But the time will come when the bridegroom will be taken from them, and on that day they will fast. Jesus goes on here to say in 21, no one sews a patch of unshrunk cloth on an old garment. Otherwise the new piece will pull away from the old, making the tear worse. And no one pours new wine into old wineskins. Otherwise, the wine will burst the skins, and both the wine and the wineskins will be ruined. No, they pour new wine into new wineskins. How about this next one at 23, where they're, they're, they're eating uh, grain? One Sabbath, Jesus was going through the grain fields, and his disciples walked along. They began to pick some heads of grain. The Pharisees said to them, Look, why are they doing what is unlawful? On the Sabbath. And he answered, Have you never read where David did what he have you never read what David did when he and his companions were hungry and in need? In the day of Abathar the high priest, he entered the house of God and ate the consecrated bread, which is lawful only for priests to eat. And he also gave some to his companions. And then he said to them, The Sabbath was made for man not man for the Sabbath. So the Son of Man is Lord even of the Sabbath. Beginning in three, uh, chapter 3, another time Jesus went into the synagogue and the man with the shriveled hand was there. Some of them were looking for a reason to accuse Jesus, so they watched him closely to see if he would heal him on the Sabbath. And Jesus said to the man who, with the shriveled hand, stand up in front of everyone. Then Jesus asked him, which is lawful on the Sabbath, to do good or to do evil, to save life or to kill? But they remained silent. He looked around at them in anger and deeply distressed at their stubborn hearts and said to the man, stretch out your hand. He stretched it out and his hand was completely restored. And then the Pharisees went out to begin to plot where the Herodians now would kill Jesus, begin to kill Jesus. God's word for God's people. It's all about rules. It's all about rules. I, uh, I, was, I said to you a little bit earlier, I, I was going through uh, some, of my, some of my notes I've been writing down, and I, I was going through some of my old uh, notes that I, I take, I, like I said earlier, there are times I hear something, I hear a quote, or I hear somebody say something, or somebody asks me a question or gives me a statement. A lot of times I'll write them down and I'll throw them in a file. And um, I was going back and looking through some of those. Um, I did some nostalgia things this last couple of weeks as I, as I prepared for these next, uh, I'm going to be up here with you the next two weeks after this too, so... Um, I started writing down some things that I, and I don't know who this is for today. I'm going to give these to you because I, I believe God gives me certain things at certain times, and I don't know what to do with them other than share them with you. If this is for you, good. If it's not for you, all right, listen to it anyway, right? It's like in school, you know. You may not want to listen to it, but you have to sometimes. Sorry, Kelly. I, mean, I, didn't, I didn't mean to throw a teacher under the bus there. Here's one. Being liked is not a prerequisite for being loved. Being liked is not a prerequisite for being loved. Being accepted has nothing to do with sharing the love of Christ. I don't know what that means for you. Love hard, even when it is hard. J. 
Jesus is not a fair-weathered friend. Jesus says, when your heart is broken, I'm right there with you. When you can't walk, he says, I will carry you. My love for you will not fade or fail. His hope does not change. We do. He does not. His hope does not change. We do. He does not. He is a good God. I've never seen his back. He is faithful. And even when I am in the pit, his presence sustains me. I don't know who those are for today. But if there's something there that you uh, pulled out of that for you today, that's why I share it with you. Well, part of, my, part of my study time this week, I was in the book of Job for a while. As I look around at this congregation today, most all of you would know about the book of Job. And you would know about Job. But let me just take you back for just a little bit, just so you know where I'm at with this. Job, um, we all know that Job, uh, that God uh, talked to Satan and they had a chit chat and, uh, and uh, Job was being going to be tested by, by Satan and God said, have at it, give, give, you, give it your best shot. And so, uh, I'm, I'm obviously paraphrasing here, I'm just kind of throwing stuff out at you so you just know where we're at. <clears throat> and then, so... Satan took everything from Job. We know that, right? Took everything. Job, Job was a wealthy, wealthy, wealthy man. He had a lot of, lot of, uh, lot of children. He had a lot of land. He had a lot of, uh, a lot of animals. Um, he had a fortune built up, and he had a lot, and it was all taken away from him. Gone. Everything except his wife. His wife who said, curse God and die. I'll give, you, I'll give you couples a moment to take, to take that in, look at each other for a second. So he lost everything but a grumpy wife, okay? Um, well, well what, what, did, what did Job do? He began to worship God. See, I lost everything. My wife says, curse you, God, but I'm going to worship you anyway. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to give you the honor that you deserve, the glory. That I'm going to be on my knees to you, God. I took some time the other day to think about what I would do if I lost everything. Would you have it in you to, to walk into this church and get on your knees and start worshiping God after you've lost everything you had? I'm talking about everything you have. And my wife wouldn't say that to me if I lost everything. So I, 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 I thought, I don't, I, don't, I, don't, I don't know. I don't know if I could, I don't know if I could worship God. I, don't, I, think I, would, I think I would be angry for a while. Wouldn't you, wouldn't you be angry for a while? Wouldn't you be frustrated? Wouldn't you be just like, take me to God. Just take me to. Just, just take me to. There's nothing left for me. Rules rules in the church get monotonous sometimes rules that we have here get monotonous sometimes that's the reason one of the things we tried to do is not make all those rules so difficult we had to have bylaws because that's what we're required to do i would just assume we not have any bylaws 
But what we tried to do here was base everything on what the Bible asked us to do. So just let me stop here for just a moment and tell you. I don't for, for one moment hope you think that we've, we've done this all perfectly and these two pastors are perfect. We're not. We're far, far from it. We're broken. We make mistakes every day. We haven't done everything right in building this church. But God picks the pieces up. He puts them back together again. Just as he did Job. Job did nothing wrong. He did nothing wrong. But he lost it all. He lost it all. Not by his own fault. It made me think of, of others in the Bible that you, we read about where they, you know, well, Jesus for one, but several others that have done things and, uh, you know, they didn't do anything wrong, but they lost things or they were, they were thrown in prison, or, uh, you know, Paul and Joseph and just those kind of things, but they didn't do anything wrong. But yet, they worshipped God. Job worshipped God. And do we know the end of the story? Have you read the last chapter of Job? The last part of Job? You know what God did for him? Gave it all back and multiplied it over and over again because he was faithful to God. What's that got to do with rules? I don't know. I really don't know. I just, I'm just tired of, see, I guess probably because I grew up not really paying attention to rules very well. It's one of the things I've asked for forgiveness for. But, but when I got into the baseball, and the reason I was using the baseball analogy, when I got into baseball, I understood there were certain rules that I had to follow. That, the, that when I umpired, there were certain rules. That white line is there for a purpose. You know, the bases are there for a purpose. That big fence in the out is there for a purpose. And there are certain things that we have to, within the church, live by, whether we want to or not. There are certain things we have to live by because God wants us to be a family as one, and we make mistakes. In your own family, there are mistakes that happen. There are rules that are broken within your own family. And there are rules that get broken here. But there's a forgiving God who loves us no matter back, no matter what. I never seen his back, right? One of the statements there. I've never seen his back. Because he's always there beside me, before me, around me. And I see that in all of you. I see that in so many of you. My mind was everywhere this week when I finally got kept saying to me uh, at least I thought he was saying to me rules, rules, rules and I don't know exactly who this is for today it's probably for me maybe some of you I know we have some really tremendous athletes within our church family I don't know if you all know that or not we have some really good athletes and they have to play by rules. And sometimes the rules don't seem very fair. And sometimes the things we do here in church maybe don't seem very fair. And if I've ever hurt any of you, I'm sorry. I don't mean to. I'm just trying to follow what I believe God wants us to do. His rules not mine his rules not yours see Job's a really good he's a really good example of this because I can only I can't, I can't begin to imagine how much Job hurt how it had to be so devastating but yet he was willing to get on his knees and worship the father I saw, I was one of the, I was in Malachi for a little bit this last week too, 
as most of you know, when I do study, I'm in a couple different, three, two or three different places. Um, I was in Malachi, and I picked up one little scripture out of Malachi that I, well, it's not the only good scripture in Malachi, but the one that hit me this week was Malachi 3.6, I, the Lord, do not change. I, the Lord, do not change. See, the Pharisees had these rules that you can't eat with sinners, uh, you can't eat food, uh, 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 the fasting thing, you know, the, the fasting thing's got to be just right. You can't eat grain out of, on a Sabbath uh, that you picked out of the field, and you can't, uh, you can't, uh, you can't help someone on a Sabbath because just ridiculous rules but they're all man-made and we man we make man-made rules here in this church sometimes that that probably don't fit everybody and are probably not cool but they're things that we feel like we need to have certain rules certain things that happen I uh, I, don't, I don't know this message for me was probably for me and maybe some of you will pick up on what I'm trying to give you today. Um, it's important that we, no matter what we do, we follow what God wants us to do. We've talked about that many times from this pulpit. I found this story that I read, actually have read here before because I pulled out of an old file that I had. I told you I was in a lot of old files this week. It's a story about a softball. I thought it, closing, I started with baseball, so we might as well close with softball, right? It's a story about a college, a women's college softball team. And they were playing in the championship, the conference championship. It was a critical game because it was for the conference, all the, all the glory of winning the conference, right? Western Oregon was at bat, and there were two runners on base. Sarah came to the plate to bat. Sarah was not a power hitter. As a matter of fact, Sarah, Sarah really had not had a very good year at all. Um, she'd only gotten on base four times out of the last 34 times at bat, which is not very good, by the way. <laughs> and she hadn't hit a home run all year, so she'd had a rough year. Made me wonder why she was playing, but hey, that's, that's another story, right? Something changed for her. She came to the plate at the, the top of the second inning, and on the second pitch, she connected, and she hit a home run. Over the fence, gone, home run. Pretty cool, huh? She was very excited, so excited that as she rounded first base, headed for second, she realized, oh, I don't think I touched first base. So she turns to go back to touch first base. You see, the rules are, even though you've hit it all the way over the fence and nobody could have caught it anyway, you still have to touch every base in baseball and softball, including home plays, for it to be count as a score. She turns to go back to first base and tore an ACL. They know later that she tore an ACL as she turned and she fell, crumpled on the ground, trying to crawl her way back to first base so she could tag that base. You see, the rules are that even though she hit the home run, and none of her players, by the way, can go pick her up and take her around the bases. You, it's, if one of the players from the, her team touches her, she's out. That's the rule. But the shortstop from the other team went up to the umpire and said, is there a rule against me picking her up? The umpire said, no, no, if you want to do that, you can. So the shortstop, who was the number one home run hitter in the conference, took the second baseman with her, and they picked her up and made a chair for her out of their arms and took her around so she could take the good leg and touch the base, took her all the way around to home plate. Sarah's team 
ended up winning the game. Because someone from the other team didn't want to play by the rules. She wanted to play by what her heart told her to do. You see, I, I see Forever Grace Church being that shortstop. Yes, sir. I see Forever Grace Church being that shortstop who would go pick up someone else even though it was maybe against the rules and carry them to where they need to be. I hope we're like that. I hope we know that there are certain rules that we don't have to play by but if it's God rules we can play by them. We're not perfect. Human, we're human. We're not perfect. This church will never be perfect. But we can be better. I can be better. I can do better. I can follow God closer. I can listen to him more, just like you can. I can play by his rules, not by mine. You see, I played a lot of sports. I've told you that before. I was one of those competitors where I wouldn't have picked her up. I wouldn't have. I'm not, I'm not proud of that, but I wouldn't have. I just, you know, I was a competitor and I wanted to win. And it's amazing how God can change your heart. It's amazing what he can do if you let him. If you let him. You may say that louder. If you let him. You got to let him in. You got to let him do what he does. Too often we're trying to do what we do. And I'm guilty of that. Instead of what he does. Pray with me, would you? Father, I don't know who this message was intended for. Father, I'm not sure it even makes sense. But you do. You just took these words and you put them where they needed to be into someone's heart, into someone's mind. Allow us to be more like Job. Allow us to be more like Job when we get hurt. We come back to you. When we get off where we shouldn't be, doing things we shouldn't do or saying things we shouldn't say or maybe gossiping where we shouldn't be gossiping. that we would know to come to you and say, forgive us, Father. Forgive us, Father. We have fallen short of the mercy. Father, I praise you for these people. We have amazing people that you put in the midst of this church building today. We have people listening online to us today through the through the amazing gift that you've given us of the technology for others to listen into the sanctuary today. Father, I pray for those that are listening today that may be touched in some way. That Forever Grace Church loves you and will follow you. That we're not perfect, but we strive to be better. We want to follow you, Father. Father. Those that are listening in online and those that are in the sanctuary and those that couldn't make it today but will be back next Sunday, they want to follow you and they want to be with you, Father. They want to go where you go. 
Help them to build, build their relationship, Father, deeper with you. And may they be your disciples that they're going to reach out this week to someone who's in need. Help us, Lord, to be better. Help me to be stronger. Help Casey to be the best he can be for you, Father. And may you receive all the glory, Lord, in all of it. Not these pastors, but you, Father. You, in all things. And may you be glorified today, Lord. In the precious name of Jesus, your Son, our Savior, and all God's people said. And if you'll rise, we'll finish with Faith of Our Fathers. Sunday school in here, the adults are in here today, the kids are downstairs, um, Teresa's class will start next week, um, downstairs also, so um, with that being said, don't, don't forget, bring somebody with you next week, it'll be, a, it'll be a fun time, it'll be, if you've got a game or a grill or anything like that, bring it along, would you, or talk to me about a grill, I need grills, I need grills, I got one, you got one I can Do you, know, do you know how to use it? No. <laughs> I'm serious. I'll try to. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know either, but I'll try. If somebody will come here and have a talk. Hey. Oh. He'll sell it. If he gets it, he'll sell it. You know that. I'd like for y'all to use it. Okay. Okay. We'll, we'll figure out a way to get it over here. Thank you for that. I told somebody about the trailer. All right. Got to have some scratch. I got that. We're just having a private conversation up here. You guys all right with that? Yeah. Yeah. All right. I love you all. I, I go in peace today and see you next Sunday. And um, uh, remember, God is the only true God. Without him, we're not going to make it, folks. This world is dangerous today without him. So, kids, kids, I know I'm old. And I know you don't want to listen to me because I'm old. But I waited too long to find Jesus. I encourage you to find him soon. It'll be a way better life than you have without him. So, go in peace, everyone. Love you all. <laughs>